In a world where billet blocks have become the go-to norm for any high-performance import drag engine, Platinum Racing products are bucking that trend and going cast. We're here with Herman from Platinum Racing Products to talk a little bit about their upcoming RB26 block. So Herman, for a start, before we get into what you've done here, can we talk about some of the weaknesses in the factory cast iron RB26 blocks? Yeah, sure. So they're notorious, obviously, for splitting down the middle on top of the oil gallery in a 05U application. The 23, uh, sorry, 24U is a bit better, but then you've still got this deck issue that it's, it's they crack all these RB blocks. They all tend to pull through the head studs, and you buy a, a you know ARP bolt set 625s and open the pack. It's 140 newtons or whatever, 140 foot pound. You pull them to, and it just cracks the deck as you're putting a head on. So they're notorious for that. Aside of uh, of all those issues is the cracking bores because you've only got two or three mil at best in the thinnest part of the bore, and you don't have a lot of cylinder pressure uh, room to move. Obviously with before you start, you know, cracking, cracking, splitting bores, you sleeve it, you lose the, you know, the rigidity behind the sleeve and you crack another bore. So there's not a lot that you can do to save a block or avoid it other than sonic testing and trying to find the best of the worst and running with that and, you know, big cams and make all the boost and turbo, you know, talk happen later to try and keep the cylinder pressure up high when you've got lots of RPM happening to try and save it. So that's the limitation of the RB block as it is now. Now you talk about that cracking on the deck surface of the block with an aftermarket stud kit but I mean I've pulled down completely stock standard uh, RB26s that aren't modified in any way shape or form maybe high mileage and even seen that cracking in stock yeah. form so that's still a problem even before you modify the engines? Yeah still a, still a problem I mean even sourcing RB blocks we try and buy as many RB30s and 26s as we can and we, we've got an internal joke with the RB26 especially that they all come pre-cracked you know because other than buying a new heritage block which then has a deck warping issue you know when you start to get heat into it a few times and you usually got to pull it all down and deck the block just to get some longevity out of the build it's just not a great casting compound now can you i mean obviously this is a difficult question to answer sort of how long is a piece of string but with a, a stock rb26 block could you give us some kind of ballpark figure in terms of where you would place the reliability in terms of horsepower levels look i mean it depends on the on the bore thickness obviously um but for example anything over a, a thousand newton meters of torque you're going to start cracking that deck regardless and you can make that happen at 800 horsepower, you can make it happen at 1200 horsepower, but in that realm is about the limitation of an RB26 block. So it's really, just to come back to that, it's really, it's not specifically the horsepower, it's the cylinder pressure that's going to cause failures, and you were alluding to that before about whereabouts in the RPM range, you're actually making yeah. that peak cylinder pressure that's going to have an impact on the reliability of the engine and also the actual power levels, correct? Exactly. I mean, you go and put a V-cam set up on an RB26, you put the right size turbo on it, try you know, 64, 66 or 68, 70 or whatever, and you get it to come on really early and dial your cams to get the best response, first pull, you're going to crack that. It just, it's the way. So sometimes uh, less is actually more. Yeah, make it happen later. Laggy turbos, that's why the Japs got away with it with those T88, 34D turtle, the turtle edition things, you know, six and a half thousand RPM, they'd start coming on and these things would live. Well, now that we've got more advanced turbos that come on at 3000 rpm and rtech manifolds and all this stuff you know it's it's people think that the blocks are getting worse but it's the tech that's getting better and cracking them earlier I, I think it's really easy to overlook that cylinder pressure element and yet that comes down to whereabouts you're making peak torque in the rpm band Let's move on to billet blocks, which, as I mentioned at the start, sort of that's become the go-to solution. Most of the uh, fastest import races are running billet blocks, be it in the RB or the 2JZ world. So, what is wrong with the billet block? Why? Where are the, the downsides with going billet? Well, like, I mean, to start off, billet blocks are great. They serve a purpose, you know, they're industry standard now. But for 99% of the population that doesn't want or need a billet block because they do want to street drive it and billet blocks can be tricky on the street. I mean, it's a race engine and someone comes to us for a race engine, you buy a billet block, you know, there's no problem with that. But for everyone else that wants to do a bit of street and a bit of drag, it's like someone says, all right, I want a thousand horsepower. Okay, well, what are you doing with it? Because all of those things matter. So 
where it becomes crucial in a billet block build because you have to go dry sump and you have to do this and you've got to warm your oil and you've got to blah, 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 blah and you can't really drive it on the street because of all these reasons. People are like, oh, when you have a cast solution and you can basically have a dead standard 400 horsepower RV sort of thing or whatever they make and you can go up to 2000 horsepower with the same platform as long as your pistons and rogs will hold it, you know, you're not valve bouncing the thing. Well, it's a turnkey solution to have that 99% of the population catered for. Coming back to, to that sort of element with the billet block, obviously, as you mentioned, great solution for a dedicated drag application at the 2,000 plus horsepower mark. But the, the bit that's easy to overlook is the fact you have to warm everything up. So not really ideally suited to your street car where you're going to pop down to the Macca's drive through for a, a bite to eat, correct? And there's a lot of die-hard billet people that, 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 that say that you can billet, you know, you can daily drive a billet block. I, I just don't agree and I don't, I often ask our customers to have a think about it and, and have a look into it because anyone that does do that with a block, and I'm not saying it can't be done, it, it happens, but there's a lot more to consider when it, when it comes to thermal expansion and getting all the water and the oil and everything up to, to temperature because yeah, it, it does make a difference. So for a street application, they're tricky. So this comes down to the thermal expansion coefficient of the, the billet material. Basically it expands more as it heats up compared to a factory cast iron block. Yeah, exponentially, Mel. I mean, when you're talking a compression ratio, you know, 40 thou on the deck sort of thing. You're talking a thou and a half up to two thou sometimes on, on a main bearing clearance. I mean, it's, it's enough difference to have a, a belt skipper tooth. You need a different adjustable sort of tensioner or it's enough to grab a bearing if you give it a rev cold. I mean, yeah, I mean, you might end up with 200 PSI oil pressure because, you know, you haven't got the expansion there to allow everything to start working. So, yeah, it's, it, there's a lot more to consider. I, I still call it a dedicated race, race block and they're really good at that, but that's where they belong. Okay, so let's come to your solution, which is an aftermarket cast iron block for the RB26. So I think we've kind of already covered off why you've done that in terms of getting the thermal expansion coefficient kind of similar or matching to the factory block. What have you engineered into this block to fix those inherent flaws with the factory RB26 block? Well look straight away we just went for a better ductile cast iron with you know, a higher MPA so we're always chasing hardness and we've proven that hardness makes a difference. Um, so we've, we've upped it on the hardness scale, not too much, but enough to give it the rigidity to stop the thing cracking and twisting. And then the bore, we know that two and a half to three mil is not enough, eight mil bore. So we know it works because there's certain sections of certain blocks, JZs in particular, that go up to eight mil and you don't see any sort of thermal damage from the piston in that area. So we sort of put two and two together. We do our homework and we realize, you know, eight millimeters, roughly give or take a millimeter. Then you can go to an 86 mil, 87, 88 mil bore, 90 mil bore and end up with a 3.1 with a 77 mil crank. And all of a sudden you've got a big piston, high revving engine. It's a 26 basically, just with a bigger slug. So, I mean, all of a sudden you've got, it opens up this whole world of options and obviously serviceability on your RB block because you're not just stuck at a, all right, brand new block. Well, we can't use that. you have got to go to an 86.5 because we need to get a torque plate hone on it. And you can't do that with a virgin bore. Uh, because Nissan didn't do it factory, so all of a sudden we're going 86 and a half. All right, we've had a, a we've had an issue, we've had an event failure, we've had a lean out or whatever. We've got a hot spot. We need to go to the next size up, 87 mil. The block stuffed. So you get one lick at a new setup, and it's a thirteen thousand dollar exercise by the time you do the testing and the braces and the machining and all the stuff. So with this solution. You can go 87 mil, 88, 89, 90 mil. You can split, you know, numbers between them, and it's, just, it's, it's a it, it's a one-off purchase, like a billet block would be. You only need to buy it once. You can replace sleeves, but obviously we've got the serviceability as well. So other than that, obviously we've given it a nice thick sort of um, 14 millimeter deck. Uh, we've resolved all the issues with the deck cracking because we've also the bolt holes that go all the way. Well, in our situation, we've made the bolt holes and the threads for the head studs go all the way down to the bottom through the block middle section into the main caps. Right. So it's basically getting, you can drill it as far down as you want and run a longer stud if you want, all the way into the mains if you feel the need. So uh, it's dead strong. We don't have any of those issues anymore. So the, the benefit of the, the longer main stud and basically tying that into the, the main bearing caps from the top 
it, does that help reduce the, the bore distortion as you talk the head down? Absolutely. So if you can pull, I mean, for a standard application, we'll drill them shallow when you just run a standard setup and, 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 uh, and where that crossover happens, we still haven't worked out yet. But if you can completely eliminate, as you say, where you compromise that bore with a bolt in every corner and run them all the way down into a solid piece of you know structure and leave the bore basically to be independent of itself and to get you know sandwiched with a head on it you're eliminating all those sort of torque plate issue problems that we're getting and distortion and when you add twist into that which ultimately it does happen um, you have all these unknown factors that end up putting scores on pistons and there's a whole heap of variables that you just eliminate by pulling it from you well you basically going past the ball, yeah. as you say. So uh, it makes sense. it's a godsend, yeah, absolutely. All right, so I mean, obviously the block hasn't actually seen production yet. We've got a, a sort of a, a cast part here as yeah. a, a two cylinder sort of yeah. proof of concept, I guess proof you call cast, it. we call it, yeah, proof of cast. So there's a whole you know heap of science that goes into the cast. And obviously we're working very closely with our friends at Crest CNC uh, in the casting prototype where the proof of concept happens can happen in a small area or a big area. So it's getting the gas off between cylinders to work because it's a Siamese bore. And because castings come a long way, you don't need the standard Welsh plug stuff as much as they did in the, in the early 90s. And all this new technology is happening, new, new casting methods. So basically proof of concept, you don't know if it's gonna work yet in that orientation because there's so many different, obviously, um, differentiating, differentiating factors and there's variables in that cast process. So you do it on a cheaper, smaller scale. And if it works or it doesn't, you make changes and then you, and, and ours went fairly well. So we might do another two cylinder plug, you know, in the next week or two. And then I think we're pretty right to go to a six cylinder version with the more expensive patterns and all the rest of it. Uh, and as soon as that sort of happens, we're going to build an engine really quickly. Peter McDonald's going to slap something together. We've got a 2.8, 2,000 horsepower set up with a pro mod and we'll sit it on the engine dyno and let it sing and try and break the thing and we'll go from there. Hopefully it goes well. Yeah, in terms of the power handling capability of this block, I mean, obviously, you know, as you just mentioned, you haven't validated this yet. Have you done any simulation? I mean, has it been de designed in uh, the virtual world and, and sort of tested, putting through any finite element analysis to kind of get a sense of what you think it might be capable of? Over and over and over again. So yeah, obviously we've thrown every piece of technology we've got at it to make sure that we eliminate all the inherent issues that we're aware of with the RB um, to be able to obviously nail it on the first one. So we're confident uh, and look, you know what? Worst case scenario, if we get it wrong 30 times, we'll get it right eventually, but hopefully we nail it on the first go and we'll, you know, we'll do whatever it takes and spare no expense or time uh, to get it to evolve to that stage and hopefully we're I know everyone wants to know when can we buy one and it's it's probably we hope by the end of the year on the shelf machine to size ready to go um, along with our cylinder heads that we almost had on display here today as well but didn't quite make it but um, obviously now that people can see that we've got the proof of cast here it's well and truly happening uh, can you give us an indication of what the price point of this is going to be or if not an actual number how it would relate to the comparable billet blocks that are currently available well look we've got we've got some numbers that we we'd like to be able to release at and for a standard two options standard cradle version you don't need the PRP brace in the alloy um, obviously that you don't need a four-wheel drive adapter that'll that'll come engineered into it uh, and then we've got from that, to an integrated main cap brace version, which is similar to what we do now, but we're possibly going to throw a, a four bolt feature into it as well. Uh, but let's say the, the standard version, which we'd rate potentially hypothetically 1500 horsepower, around 8,000 uh, bucks. The, and the integrated brace version with all the whistles, the bells and whistles and the four bolt mains, potentially 10,000 bucks is, is the aim. It might vary a little bit, but going back to the RB05U or, or 24U, by the time you buy a block for 4,000 or 7,000, depending on which one, and then you go and throw a $3,000 main cap brace at it, you do $2,000 worth of machining, you sonic test it, um, you, you end up spending ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 anyway on a block. That's gonna be inferior. That's gonna crack. So that's our thinking. And look, a billet block, obviously it's more expensive. You're talking 14,000. But it's, uh, I want to separate 
and I know everyone's going to be comparing the billet block to our block, but it, it's a it's a different, you know, it, it appeals to a different market. Yeah. And yes, ours will be cheaper, and people might say that's dear. But when you add it all up, and the performance that you're going to get out of a cast block, and we're hoping to rate these things up to three thousand horsepower, you might start seeing them everywhere. Oh, it's an exciting product and uh, obviously there's no end in sight and people, particularly in Australia, wanting to develop the RB26 platform, so it makes sense to give them another option. Look, uh, great to get some insight into that and if people do want to reach out to PRP, how are they best to do so? Oh, look, uh, email or any of the social media channels, download the app, uh, we monitor that. Um, but look, it's happening and I know a lot of people want answers and while we're not taking any money, there's a waiting list uh, and people will get a preference there. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go as quick as we can and every t every after now, obviously we wanted to keep it a bit of a secret, but now that we've sort of let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, with some social posts and, and obviously this, um, yeah, we'll be full throttle and anything that happens, obviously we'll be posting and letting everyone know. Oh, sounds like people are going to have to be a little bit patient, but it also sounds like it'll be worth the wait. So we can't wait to see what sort of power people start making with these. Thanks again for your time, Herman. Thank you very much, man. Cheers. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.